perform duties that may threaten your health. Medical personnel may not always be immediately available. It is up to you to know the fundamentals of first aid which you can apply to yourself or to others, whether you are at home, in garrison, or in the field. A snake bite must be taken care of immediately and with the proper first aid measures. If you can, kill the snake for later identification. This man needs immediate aid. Get him to medical aid as soon as possible. But until medical aid is available, you have to apply first aid yourself. In the meantime, keep him quiet. His moving around only makes the poison circulate faster in his body. Low which the flesh was pierced by the snake's complete examination so that you won't miss any bites. Hurry, though. If you have a snake bite suction kit, use its tourniquet immediately. In the kit, you will find everything you may need to give adequate first aid. Apply the tourniquet between the wound and the heart, a couple of inches above the bite or swelling. Not too tight, though, but tight enough so that the veins will stand out under the skin. In this case, the tourniquet is not to stop bleeding, but to prevent poison from spreading. A strap or any such material will do. Crush the iodine applicator. Moisten the cotton swab tip with iodine and apply it to the area around the bite. Then, disinfect the lancet blade with a flame. Now you've got to make a cross cut over each fang wound. Each fang wound, remember. Make them about one half inch long and a quarter inch deep. Sure, it's painful, but it's something that must be done. You've got to prevent the poison from being carried through the body of the injured man. With transportation available and immediate first aid rendered, get the man to medical aid as soon as possible. Be sure to take the dead snake so that the proper anti-snake bite serum can be given to the victim. Continue first aid. Suck out the poison with the suction pump provided in the snake bite kit. This transparent pump housing extension is for flat surfaces. Place the pump lightly over the incisions. Press the plunger, then release. Repeat to increase the suction. If a kit isn't handy, use your mouth to suck out the poison. It's harmless unless your mouth has a cut or an open sore. If the fingers or toes have been bitten, use this slotted transparent suction adapter. Continue suction with the pump for one hour before loosening the tourniquet. Then remove the tourniquet for a minute. Reapply for five to ten minutes. Then remove for another minute. The time off should be gradually increased and the time on gradually decreased. 
If the victim becomes faint, crush the ammonia inhalant you'll find in the kit and pass it under the victim's nose. Use these first aid measures for snake bite and you'll be using your knowledge of first aid to properly assist medical personnel in making the injured man healthy again, none the worse for his experience with snake bite poison. But there are other kinds of poisons. A mistake is made and poison is taken internally. There are definite first aid measures you must use to minimize the effect of the poison until medical care is available. First, you've got to dilute the poison he's swallowed. Send anyone available for salt. Meanwhile, give him lukewarm water, as much as he can swallow. Under no circumstance, give a poison victim alcohol. Now prepare some warm salt water. Use plenty of salt in it. Insist he drink all the salt water. This will help him to throw up the poison from his stomach. If that doesn't work, have him tickle his throat with his finger to produce a vomit. That should bring up the poison. Now get him to medical help immediately. Bring the poison bottle along so the medics may be able to use the proper antidote. But poisons cannot only get into you, they can get onto you as well. Like poison ivy, for example. You should be able to recognize it. It's a creeping plant with three pointed leaves on each stem, irregular edges and heavy veins. Mature leaves are shiny, but young or old, these leaves are poisonous. So is poison oak, which grows on shrubs or trees. It has three rounded leaves on each stem, with deeply notched edges and spines on the stems. Poison sumac is itself a shrub, with seven to 13 long, narrow leaves on each stem. In spring, it has greenish flowers, which turn into white berries. If a victim contacts any of these poisonous plants, he won't discover it until some time later. He'll itch and he'll want to scratch his reddened skin desperately. This he shouldn't do. That will only make it worse by spreading the irritant. Treatment should start as soon as possible after exposure. Examine the skin to see if a rash has started or if little blisters are present. If there were, you'd do nothing but get him medical help immediately. If there is no redness or blisters, he should wash the affected area right away. Use plenty of water and a strong soap, such as GI soap. This should be done several times to remove all the irritant poison. Remember, all outer clothing must be washed thoroughly so as not to recontaminate the victim or spread the irritant to others. Another warning, don't burn shrubbery containing poison ivy, poison oak, or poison sumac. The smoke picks up the poison irritant, carries it often as far as a mile, and affects not only the skin, but the eyes as well. Rubbing is not only useless, but harmful. 
What should be done is to wash his eyes out with plenty of clean water, enough to dilute and wash away the poison. When strong chemicals are splashed into the eyes, again you will stop the victim from rubbing his affected eyes. You'll have him rinse out his eyes with water to dilute the chemical. Then get him to medical help immediately. If a soft foreign object, such as an insect or an eyelash, gets into an eye, first try pulling the upper lid away from the eyeball. Don't let him rub the eye. The tears should wash out the object. If it still remains, roll the upper eyelid back over a matchstick or something similar to expose the irritating object so you can easily remove it with a clean handkerchief. If the object is under the lower lid, pull the lower lid away, and if you see the object, use the cleanest cloth available to remove the irritant. If that doesn't work, get him to medical aid. Now, if the foreign object is hard, such as glass or metal, blindfold both eyes to help prevent movement of the injured eye. Get him to medical aid immediately. Now, you wouldn't think a grown man could get a foreign object into his nose unless it crawled up or flew into it. Well, here's one way it might happen. But seriously, don't try to fish it out with a wire or matchstick, which may jam it in even tighter. There's only one way to help him get it out. By encouraging him to blow his nose. Suppose a bug or an insect happens to get into an ear. Again, don't try to probe it out with a pin, a matchstick, or anything stiff. Shine a flashlight into his ear to attract the insect to the outer surface. If the flashlight doesn't do the job or isn't handy, try to flush the insect out with some water. But don't. Don't use water, though, if the object in the ear is a bean or a seed or any other thing that might swell when wet. If these first aid methods fail, get the man to medical personnel for treatment. Get medical assistance, too, if the man happens to have something stuck in his throat. When giving first aid, always keep yourself calm. This will help keep the injured man calm. Then, if the object is stringy meat or a bone, get him to breathe in slowly and then try to cough it up. If that doesn't work, try to have him remove the object with his fingers but caution him not to push the object down deeper into his throat. Because the object could result in his choking to death, get him to medical help immediately. Splinters may easily get in, but they're often tough to get out. But splinters must always be removed. While the area of the splinter is washed with soap and hot water, sterilize a needle. Carbon will form, but it's harmless. So don't contaminate your sterile needle by wiping it off. If it's handy, apply an antiseptic.
Then remove the splinter with the sterilized needle or other pointed object. But be sure you get it all out. Then cover the wound with a sterile adhesive dressing. It's just about the same with a blister. First, wash with soap and hot water. Then apply an antiseptic, if it's available, to sterilize the area. Now, sterilize the needle. With the sterilized needle, puncture the blister at its lower edge so that the fluid will all drain out and blot away the fluid with a clean dressing or cloth. Then cover the blister with a small adhesive dressing to prevent infection and further irritation. You may not know what's wrong with a man when he suddenly complains of a stomach ache. Any abdominal pain may be due to any number of different causes. Only thing you can do is to get him medical aid. A man who suddenly faints and passes out should regain consciousness in a few minutes. If he doesn't, get medical aid immediately. In the meantime, don't move him. There's no way of finding out why he fainted until he comes to again. Remove anything loose he may have in his mouth and pull his tongue forward so he won't choke on it. Loosen his collar, tie, belt and other tight clothing so he can breathe easier. And if there's water around, press a wet, cold handkerchief to his forehead. But give him none to drink while he's still unconscious. He may choke on it. When he comes to, keep him quiet. Have someone get a blanket or a coat to keep him warm. Make him as comfortable as possible. After he is rested, have him checked by a doctor or other medical personnel. Your knowledge of first aid can be a matter of life and death, especially when a man has stopped breathing. Time is important. Seconds count. Artificial respiration must be begun immediately. Watch each step closely. Get him out of the water and immediately turn him head down. Roll him on his stomach with head turned to one side so that the excess fluids can easily drain out of his mouth. Remove loose bridge work, chewing gum, and pull his tongue forward to prevent choking and to allow easy access of life-giving oxygen. Now begin artificial respiration using the back pressure arm lift method. Keep this rhythm. Back pressure, release. Arm lift, release. Back pressure, release. Arm lift, release. Notice closely the placement of the hands. Back pressure, release. Arm lift, release. Thumbs touching. Fingers spread outward and downward. Place the heels of your hands just below a line between his armpits. Be sure your hands are not too high on his back. Rock forward in rhythm until your arms are almost vertical. With elbows straight, allow the weight of your body to force the air out of his lungs. To avoid sudden or extra pressure, watch how he removes his hands before rocking backward. Now let's study the arm lift movement. 
Watch how he grasps the arms near the elbows. As he rocks backward, the victim's arms are naturally drawn upward. This pulls on his chest muscles, eases the weight on his chest, and increases the chest capacity so that fresh air is sucked into the lungs. You may switch knees for comfort, but don't change the steady rhythm. Back pressure, release. Arm lift, release. Or someone else can take over if you get tired, but try not to break the rhythm while changing. Continue artificial respiration for at least two hours or until he starts to breathe himself. It's also important to keep the victim as warm as possible while the artificial respiration continues. When he's fully conscious and breathing normally, continue to avoid shock by keeping him quiet, keeping him warm, giving him warm stimulants, and by giving him reassurance. Then you can turn him over to train medical personnel knowing you have done your job well. Another menace, carbon monoxide in a closed garage or in a vehicle itself or from a stove in a poorly ventilated shelter. Carbon monoxide can knock a man out. It can kill without warning because it has no odor or color. He feels dizzy and weak, gets a headache, perhaps vomits, gets weaker. And then, unconsciousness. The first thing to do is to get him into the fresh air immediately. If he stopped breathing, prepare him for artificial respiration. Watch how this man does it alone, how he protects the man's face by rolling him onto his left arm. Removes everything loose from his mouth, bridge work or chewing gum. Remember, keep your hands on a line running between the armpits, not too high on his back or on his shoulder blades. Keep your elbows straight and extend pressure downward on his back. You never know when you'll have to administer artificial respiration. Lightning or contact with a live wire can cause a man to stop breathing. Separate him from his electrical contact. Do it fast. Remember, if the man has stopped breathing, he can die of suffocation. Get him off the wire. Use dry clothing, a dry rope, anything that doesn't conduct electricity. If the ground is wet, stand on a dry board, rubber raincoat or poncho. But be careful. Don't touch the wire or man while he is in contact with the wire. If he's not breathing, start artificial respiration at once. Flat on his stomach, face to one side. Get all loose bridge work or gum out of his mouth and pull his tongue forward. Then keep the rhythm going steadily without breaking it. If you've got an assistant, have him loosen the victim's clothing. Make him more comfortable. And keep him warm to prevent shock. Back pressure, 
release. Arm lift, release. Back pressure, release. Arm lift, release. You'll continue artificial respiration with this rhythm for at least two hours or until he starts to breathe himself. And only when he's fully conscious will you take him to medical aid. Remember, he's still weak. Support him. Continue to treat for shock. Give him warm stimulants if available. Keep his clothing loose and most important, keep him warm. Whether saving a life or removing a splinter, remember how to give proper first aid. Let's review some important principles. In snake bite, place a tourniquet above the wound. With the snake bite kit suction pump, draw out the venom and get victim to medical aid immediately. Never rub an eye with a foreign object in it. Don't use a stick or wire to remove foreign objects from the ear or nose. Wash away poison plant irritants with plenty of soap and water. Keep blisters, abrasions, cuts and splinter wounds clean and germ free. Continue to use rhythmic artificial respiration in cases of drowning, in carbon monoxide poisoning, in electric shock. Remember and practice these first aid principles so that when medical aid is not immediately available, you can help yourself and others to remain healthy and whole and alive.